Ivan Kiryevsky. Ivan Vasilyevich Kiryevsky, Russian, April 3, 1806 in Moscow, June 23, 1856 in St. Petersburg, was a Russian literary critic and philosopher who, together with Alexei Komyakov, is credited as a co-founder of the Slavophile movement. Early Life and Career Ivan Kiryevsky and his brother Pyotr were born into a cultivated noble family of considerable means. Their father was known for hating French atheism so passionately that he would burn heaps of Voltaire's books, acquired specifically for the purpose, his fatal disease was contracted while healing the wounded soldiers during the French invasion of Russia. The boy was just six at the time of his death, he was brought up by a maternal uncle, Vasily Zukovsky, and the mother, M. Miyadotya Yelagina, an influential lady who held a brilliant salon in Moscow. She professed her dislike of Peter the Great for his treatment of his wife Eudoxia and the Lapukin family, to which he was related. The father's distaste for French culture and the mother's distrust of post petrine officialdom may have shaped Karayevsky's views on Russia and its history. Starting in 1821, Karayevsky attended the Moscow University, where he became interested in contemporary German philosophy and joined the circle of wisdom lovers, Lomudry, led by Dmitry Venevitinov and Vladimir Rodevsky. He was particularly impressed by the teachings of Schelling, whose representation of the world as a living organism was in tune with Kiryevsky's own intense dislike of European rationalism and fragmentedness. Kiryevsky's original literary works do not give him a place in the history of Russian literature, but he did gain a measure of fame by publishing the penetrating analyses of contemporary authors. His 1828 review of Pushkin's poetry, written in purple prose and entitled Some Observations About the Character of Pushkin's Poetry, contained the first in-depth assessment of Eugene and Yegin. Later, Kiryevsky would exchange letters with Pushkin and publish his works in his short-lived periodical Yevropayes, The European. After having been refused by his cousin, Kiryevsky set out for Europe, where he attended the lectures of Schelling, Schleiermacher, Hegel, and Michelet. During his travels, he perceived the rotten foundations of Western society, based on individualism, which he would later contrast with the integrality, Sobornost, of Russian society. Back in Moscow by 1832, he united all the literary aristocracy, as Pokodin said, under the aegis of Yevropayes. The journal was banned after two issues, but not before Kiryevsky published his large article The Nineteenth Century, his first extended critique of Western philosophy and values. The failure of Yevropayes exacerbated Kiryevsky's disappointment in Russian intellectuals and elite. He married and applied himself wholeheartedly to family life. Many critics, starting with Herzen, tended to attribute the 12 year hiatus in Kiryevsky's literary career to his Oblomovian inclination to indecision and inaction. Indeed, his whole literary output consists of a dozen full length articles and may be collected within a single volume, the full 1911 collection of his works, including letters is 600 pages in two volumes. Dot. Later life and ideas. It was not until the early 1840s that Kiryevsky reappeared on the intellectual scene of Moscow to take the side of Komyakov in his controversy with Herzen, Timofey Granovsky and other young westernizers. Since the reactionary reign of Nicholas I was not favorable for journalistic activities, Komyakov and Kiryevsky criticized the one-sided, superficial, analytical rationality of the West in salons and soirees of Moscow. In his few written works, Kiryevsky contrasted the philosophy of Plato and Greek church fathers, notably Maximus the Confessor, with the rationalism of Aristotle and medieval Catholic doctors of the church. He blamed Aristotle for molding the mind of the West in the iron cast of reasonableness, which he defined as timid prudence, as opposed to true wisdom, or the striving for the better within the circle of the commonplace. Hegel's doctrines were seen as the latest emanation of Aristotle's analytical approach, which divorced mind from soul, thoughts from, religious, feelings. Kiryevsky aspired to retrieve the lost wholeness of man in the teachings of Eastern Orthodoxy. His devout wife introduced him to the elders, Startsy, of the Optina Monastery, which he frequented in the declining years of his life. Although he did not share Yuri Samarin's radical enthusiasm for all things pre-Petrine, Kiryevsky extolled the spiritual treasures of medieval Russia. According to him, the monasteries of ancient Rus radiated a uniform and harmonious light of faith and learning to disparate Slavonic tribes and principalities. The net of churches and monasteries covered Russia so thickly, that these bonds of spiritual community unified the country into a single living organism. 
He died at the age of 50 during a cholera epidemic. His brother Byodor outlived him by several months. They were buried side by side in the Optina Monastery, the first layman to be honored so. Optina Monastery.